Now, tonight on the East African Basket, we take you to Quinn District in Uganda, where a project championed by Kilimo Trust, a non-profit organization, is set to change the fortunes of farmers. The project known as Recycle Rice Initiative for Climate Smart Agriculture aims to promote sustainable rice production practices in East Africa. As Mashirima Kapombe reports, the project is also benefiting farmers who grow other crops. Quen District is located about 250 kilometers northeast of Kampala. This one. Here in Kapchorwa area, Joram Bushindich receives practical lessons to maintain the soil health for his coffee. The black material being poured into the soil is rice straw biochar, a low-cost and renewable resource that has proved effective in remedying water and soil environments. Farmers always burn these materials. When you burn them, you lose a lot of nutrients. There are nutrients like nitrogen, it just evaporates and disappears. Sulfide just evaporates, so farmers are discouraged from just burning. There's a lot of straw that has been produced in rice fields, and that straw has to be ploughed back into the soil to help farmers improve on their yields. Most of the farmers in this Quen region, like Mze Joram, do not need to buy food. He has bananas on his farm, maize, beans, fruit, pumpkin, and even livestock. His cash crop is coffee. Therefore, quality affordable inputs are key to his survival. I've been using cow dung, but the cow dung is cheap. I get it from my heads of cattle. Fertilizers became expensive. A bag of DAP was going almost at 250000 And with that, if you take a farmer at this level, that was so high. For other farmers within this district, the rice straws are used as compost which the farmer makes himself. These rice straws, they are always uh, brought to this point and uh, we don't actually start pre-composting without shredding mm -hmm. because uh, we have to shred it first uh, to make sure that we increase the surface area for the composting uh, microbes to work on. Mm. So if you look at... Uh, the way this thing looks like, already it had been uh, shredded mm -hmm. using a machine. And now, mm -hmm. uh, the way it is, if a little bit of moisture is added with a bit of uh, accelerator, now the natural microbes will start pre-composting it mm -hmm. to a level that will be easy to be worked on by the worms. This is the middle stage of uh, composting. We call it pre-composting. Mm -hmm. The rice straws that had already been shredded on the other side are brought here under the shade because the pre-composting must be done under the shade. Okay. So at this stage, uh, the farmer had applied what we call the accelerator mm -hmm. to make sure that it now changes into a form that the worms would eat it very easily. Yeah. The, 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 the red wriggler, mm -hmm. what we are calling the earthworms, they eat the rice straws and in, within their gut, the enzyme actually uh, digests it mm -hmm. and what comes out is now the vermicast that has got full fortification of mineral elements needed by the crop. The vermicomposted rice straws are now ready for the farm. At this stage, its effectiveness is being tried on this farmer's coffee. While the process of um, composting goes on, you've seen that there is production of what we call the vermijuice. The vermijuice in itself is a biopesticide. So a farmer also uh, applies the same to the crop wherever they are affected by pests. In this case we are only trying it for uh, coffee but the same is effect would also be impacted in other crops. Be cereals, uh, be vegetables or any other horticultural crop. Further afield at the Ngenge irrigation scheme a rice legume crop rotation trial is ongoing. Soil scientists here want to find out the effects on the soil health and overall quality of the rice produced where a legume was planted. All legumes have what we call nodules. This one is past that stage, but we can see a bit of the nodules, these nodules. So there's a, a, a process called 
it's a symbiotic relationship where nitrogen is fixed by the living organism in the soil. It's more like a, a mutual kind of relationship. That's how we get this nitrogen into our soils from the legumes. The CEO of Kilimo Trust in Uganda says as simple as it may seem, those indigenous farming practices are still important now. Climate change has, 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 has forced us to revisit and look at our traditional practices. What did they used to do in, in, those, in the olden days? And so scientifically, you can't just continue planting beans every year without intercrop or, 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 or doing... Um, uh, crop rotation. Traditionally, that's what they used to do. You would plant maize, next season you plant beans, the next season. That's what they used to do traditionally, and that was all about soil health. On the East African basket tomorrow, we cross borders to Tanzania.